What's up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com and in this video we're going to be doing some logo design inside of Inkscape. So this is my, this is Ivan's Inkscape logo design tutorial version 2.0. I have a previous tutorial on this topic and when I was looking at it recently I decided to do an update to show you my method. I'm also going to provide you guys with my logo design template, which is going to be in a link at the bottom of this video. So make sure to check the, the description below this video to get that link if you want to have a bit of a cheat sheet for your logo design purposes. I use this sheet for uh, micro brand logos, and um, I would use this sheet if uh, it was uh, anyone ever asked me to make a logo for them. I've been thinking about making a logo uh, design gig. And so uh, this would be something I would use for that purpose. I also prepared this sheet last year when I was uh, considering doing a microsite, uh, a microsite gig for, uh, for clients. And so this was kind of an easy way for me to make simple logos for clients who may not have a logo. So you can see there's a lot of sort of templates that I made. All these fonts are commercial free. So it'll be, I won't collect the fonts and kit them with this file. Basically you'll have to, uh, I'll, I'll kind of like hover over some of them maybe, but you'll may, mainly just have to open the file and maybe click on those and then just see what it's called. Let's see here. So this one's called the bold font. This one's called Ampersand. Bernard, MT Condensed, Heitenschweiler, <laughs> uh, EA Font, 1.5 by Ghetto Shark, Chinese Rocks, Anton, Boris Black Blocks, Wild Ride, Short Baby, Fork, with a QE, QUE, Molot, Aardvark Cafe, uh, Bio Monster, Golden Ranger, Headline One, Knee Wave with a KN, and then Auto Lava. So you can look up all those and download those probably from Da Font. Da Font is probably the best thing you can use. Basically, you can select a category, and then you can come come in here. And you can type in a preview and then under more options, you can select public domain or 100% free and 100% free. And those will get you commercial free fonts. And so you can look through all these categories. I've looked through this site a few times uh, looking for high quality display fonts. I haven't gotten them all by any means. Um, I just kind of selected some of the most generic ones for my uh, logo design template file that could be used for a lot of different purposes and projects, you know, but you can come to dot font and, and sort for hours and hours and hours trying to find display fonts. Excuse me. You can also go to fonts.google.com and there's a ton here. And then if you want to buy some creativemarket.com is a really good place to get high quality fonts that are cheap. You can also find font packs from stock photo uh, websites. They tend to be a lot more expensive. But there are some high quality ones out there. There's other places like uh, uh, Envato Marketplace, which probably has fonts. I'm not sure. And then there's dedicated font websites. But most of those websites tend to charge obscene amounts of money for fonts, uh, you know, over $100, excuse me, depending on the licenses. So I would be very cautious about dedicated font websites. In my experience and from years of looking into all this stuff, the best thing to do is to use commercial free fonts from places like Defont or Font Squirrel or 1001 Fonts or to or Google or, or Google Fonts or to buy uh, buy something from some place, a cheap marketplace like Creative Market. Um, some of the fonts you'll see on on this site are also on those higher end sites. Uh, the difference is th this marketplace is just a lot cheaper. So the vendors are kind of selling the same things in different places, but then they'll charge different prices depending on the source. So this is a great site. You can see there's some this is, there's some really high quality stuff. That's a really nice font. Um, this is a really nice font. 
and uh, there's a, just a ton of really nice fonts here. If you if you really wanted to uh, get yourself something nice, then you could grab yourself a typeface and you could you know you use it for a number of projects. So, anyways, just a quick note on fonts. And once you download those, it should be pretty easy to figure it out. You can usually just double click on the font to install it on your computer. Excuse me. Uh, and you, you just need a desktop license, by the way. If you're ever looking at licenses, you just need a desktop license. You don't want a, a, a web font license is for embedding the font into your website. So you don't need to do that. So um, anyways, so we'll get to this in a moment here. Let's go back to this. So what I tend to do is I'll tend to have a brand that I want to create and then I'll just look at my stock fonts here and just figure out which one would work basically for like a micro brand or whatever. And then if I have something really important, I might go on the creative market and do that. But I like to do this. This would be, uh, you know, text only. This would be just, this would be considered a flat logo design is what they call it. It's like there's a lot of different descriptors for the types of graphic design. This is just, this is just flat design where it's just whatever you're doing is just two two D right on your your canvas. And uh, I like to do neutral colors, black and white, and then I like to do um, one core color to keep it really simple. And so in some cases, I'll pick a, a certain kind of blue here, and then I'll just pick find something on its uh, color spectrum. I like to use this palette here in Inkscape and I'll just, uh, you know, make adjustments uh, to that design based on whatever color spectrum I've chosen. And you can also come to places like colorhexa.com. Excuse me. You can do searches on colors. You can put color hexes and then you can you can see like a whole profile on that color hex. And um, it comes with like formulas for schemes you might want to use that are complementary colors. Um, you can see the monochromatic thing is pretty useful. And then there's also uh, tints and shades. Excuse me. So if you have a color that you want to use that's not native to Inkscape's uh, small palette, then you might use, you might throw your color hex into this and you might use some tints or shades of that uh, specific hex. And that way you can keep into a color spectrum that's really complementary to what you're trying to do. So, uh, Let's uh, let's do something here. So let's let's do, let's do like a window tinting uh, uh, logo. Let me color this blue here, and let's say that this brand was. Let's uh, ungroup this. Let's say this was called uh, Radical Enters. And by the way, you can you only need to grab one little entity and then you can press control D and copy that. Control D is awesome for duplicating any object you're you're handling in Inkscape. So let's make sure that these are equal size. So I'm gonna click on this entity, make sure it's all on pixels. I'm gonna grab the width, I'm gonna copy that. I'm gonna come to the other word, and, and I always create different objects for the text. I never hit enter and do spacing within the text boxes. I always create them as different objects because that way you can 100% manipulate the text. So let me hit enter here to make sure that's the same size. I'm going to move it up real close like this. And then I'm going to select one object and shift click the other object. And over here on align and distribute, you can hit shift control and A to pop this entity open. You can also find it up here in the menus. I think it's under object. It should be, yeah, align and distribute down here. All these side menus, you can access through by popping them out from this region. If it shows shift control, it's probably a special menu that you can pop out. The ones you'll want are align and distribute and then export PNG image. Um, and then probably you can look you can look at this stuff. Those are really the main ones that I use align and distribute. Oh, and then fill and stroke. That's really important. You really, really you really want these three for sure. You can also have these other ones layers and stuff. you don't really need those. 
So anyways, select an object, shift click the other object, um, make sure that the align is set to uh, relative to last selected, and then center on vertical axis. So if I if I was to click around here, you would see this, this goes to the bottom, uh, this goes to the right, this goes to the left. So all these aligning features um, are really, really useful. You can do it relative, relative to last selected or the first selected or the biggest or the smallest, you know, all kinds of criteria. Last selected is, I think, the best. Um, so those are equal size now. You can see that the letters are somewhat slanted up. You can always grab the text and and hold shift and click. Or is it? I guess it won't let me do. While there, oh, there it goes. Yeah, you don't have to hold shift. <laughs> That's my bad. So when you're holding the object, you can just click it and you see how the arrows are out and then they're curved. So this, this lets you rotate. So I think each entity, it naturally would be kind of like that. It, it's a little bit slanted because probably each object is, is has been slanted independently. But I just wanted to show that to you guys you can you can create a, a sort of you know dynamic effect by by just turning the box like that anyways so let's say what's a radical color uh like a like a fusion yeah like this kind of a hot pinkish reddish and uh let's let's do it darker and or let's do it just a little bit darker, yeah. And then I'm gonna grab a box here and I'm gonna create this object and let's make this this sort of hot pinkish. I'm gonna move this, I'm gonna select my, uh, my cursor, my mouse cursor. I'm gonna move this to the bottom layer. This up here lets you control layers on the fly. It's really, really convenient. I'm going to select these entities and then align that. Oop. Looks like I forgot to group these together by selecting them and, and then right clicking and, and doing group. And then I'm going to um, center this object, blow it up here like this. Maybe make it a little bit smaller. And then let's try, we don't want to make it too pink. It's a little bit too pink. So this would be a really basic example of a logo that you could, that, that one could do. Um, that would be just really simple, completely flat and, 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 most of the time that I spend messing around with this stuff, it's not really on the font so much anymore. It's I've got a pretty good system for that with the templated fonts. And then you can always go do a search on the fly. Uh, like if you, for example, the word radical, you might want to do something radical like this auto lava font. You know, you might want to do something kind of like this that's real stylized rad, you know, like you might want to find a spray paint type font, you know, so it, it just, it just depends. Like it's usually instead of like, it's, it's really easy to get into the habit of downloading like a hundred different fonts and then thinking that that's going to be the best way for you to, to sort through um, and find things, but it takes hours to do things that way. The best thing is if you have a style in mind, for example, if we were to go to the font, I might look for grunge or groovy. Let's see, graffiti. And then I might go uh, do the preview radical, large, sort by popularity. Uh, make sure they're under more options, public domain, 100% free, resubmit. So that's a so something like that. I, and, and the goal is to find something really thick display level font, but that also is extremely legible. 
because a lot, a lot of fonts, a large majority of fonts are just not very legible um, on on these kinds of sites. So that's kind of kiddo. It's so bubbly you can't read it. So a good one might be uh, maybe that one. How many are those? Five pages. So that's not too bad. And you could sit here and look through samples until you find something that you feel is going to work. Most of these aren't even legible, though, but my point is that you want to come onto the site directly and do searches every time because it's a whole lot easier to sort, sort, uh, sort through a site like this than it is to sort through the Inkscape files because once you select the font and you come into it and you click this drop down, I'm not going to click it. it. It takes forever to load, and then in order to preview them, you have to click on them. It, it just takes way too long. Like you need to be able to see them at a glance on the page. So that's why it's better to, when you're looking for a font, just use the site directly. And if you've already downloaded the font, then that's fine. But you still need to just, uh, you still need a, you need a way to look at everything really quickly and easily. I mean, all these, most of these are garbage, sadly. Might try Groovy. That was that was not too bad. That's real old school. That's like Days and Confused type of. Uh... Oh hey, that one's cool. Heavy Heat, Radical Tinters. <laughs> so that one that one could work. It's really legible and also really thick and stylized. That one could work. That oh that one's really good. Gecko Lunch. That one would that one would work really well. That one's not bad. A little bit hard to read. So you get my point there on how I would recommend uh, approaching the uh, the font. The colors is what really takes a minute to figure out what you really enjoy, you know. But uh, uh, let's say this this was the the choice. You could leave it as flat. I would right click and group them together. By the way. Or you could make them a little bit thicker, give them some more presence. And the way you do that is, hold on, you, um, you group your, your font together, then you control D to uh, uh, duplicate it. Then you move it one layer down, go to the fill, make it transparent, go to the stroke, make it solid, and put the stroke to something like 50. And then under the stroke paint, do a color that is in between your contrasting colors. Usually it's like you can do like three colors like this. So it might be something like this. Let's see. Oh, that's the exact color. Let's try. Let's try this uh, pinkish white color. So the goal here when you do this, this this uh, this particular method is you want to make it so that all the space behind the first cop first copy is completely filled. So let's try 70. Some fonts just don't look right when you do this method. So you kind of have to uh, be careful because some of them have these weird random artifacts that drift in. You see this sliver of pink. That's something went wrong with how, how it was developed. This is actually a really good one, though. What you want to do is you want the edges to be completely bubbled out. And then you can, to fill in the rest, you can just create a box. So let me grab this box. And let's uh, empty out the stroke. But then on the fill, we'll use our teardrop to copy this pink color. Now, for the teardrop, if you want to fill the, the core of the box, it's it you just click it, right? But if you want to if you want to fill the edges, you shift click it. So shift click to to do the stroke, and so if you want to make a color down, if you want to click a color down here on the stroke, you shift click it, and then to just do the normal fill, it's just a regular left click. So we got our little pink box, and basically now we just need to to line it up with the. Uh, Let's hold shift and control and the edge and we can equally lower this box. Let's see, where is it? So we got here. 
So let's see. Oops, didn't mean to do that. Let's do it about there. And then we'll lower it one. And then we can grab another box and just do a tiny uh, correction on some of these anomalies. So let's copy this and then just put this here. And we're just, you know, filling in the cracks. If you want your stuff to snap, by the way, you can you can select the snap and it'll snap to objects that it can detect. That's usually annoying though. I usually turn that off. So let's, uh, let's see. Not sure why it's so. It's moving like that. It's jellyish. Usually, you shouldn't have to get. Sorry, hold on a sec. If it gives you problems, you want to go outside and just do like a selection like this. Odd, I couldn't select it. Oh, I see. You see how this is like all selected in. We need to, this is, I think a part of this. So if this ever happens, you just need to ungroup. Yeah. And then you can, it should work fine now. I'm just going to go ahead and drop this one down. And then get real close. You, you usually don't have to be this uh, careful. But apparently there's something weird going on with the letter T in this font set. All right, so that should be that should be it. So radical tinters. And if you ever wanted to adjust the colors, you basically just have to select all the little things. If, and when you do it like this, you, you're gonna have to deselect that core object that you're not trying to change. And then you can, well, some of this is actually set to the fill. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Like if you fill, let me see. If you fill some, if you fill the text, it's it's not really going to matter. Um, that actually might have, well, it wouldn't have solved the. I don't know. Okay. Anyway, so um, you can you group all those together though, like this, and uh, oops, what did I do? Move this away. Grab that. Group that all together. Let's move this back. Oh, let's move it here. And just select this and move it down. There we go. So when you group all those background entities together, you can just then at will. Um, let's see. Just click that front object and you select them all like that. You can then at will just kind of go in and go, I want to try this color like this. You see, you hit the left click and then and then and then shift click. But uh, you get the idea. Um, not sure that that's the most perfect way of doing this particular logo, but I think it looks pretty good. It's really simple, clean, easy to do. 
Um, trying to decide, should we do another logo? I don't know if we need to. But once you get used to this process, it, it can take you like 10 minutes to do a new logo. Like this ceiling fans. I think this is the EA Sports type of uh, font. Yeah, it's like an EA Sports equivalent. But it, to me, it looks like a tech font. So let's let's do one more example, and then we'll call it quits on this video just to sh kind of show you how quick and easy it can be. Um, let's uh, control B this. And then, by the way, to do this, you hold your mouse wheel. There's another way to do it, too, somewhere else, but that's how I do it. Um, you're pro probably, like, holding a button somewhere. I don't know. It's it's in one of my other videos. If you want to just search on my channel for Inkscape, I have a, a, some other tutorials on there for, like, basic controls in Inkscape if you want to learn how to do all that. Okay, so let's ungroup these. Let's do... Uh, let's do a brand, Tall Tech. Tall Tech. If you're making micro brands, by the way, what I like to do is I like to have like a core keyword and then I like to count the letters and do either one, uh, uh, the same number of letters on the other complementary. All my brands are two words. If you go more than two words, it gets really hard to make a logo look good and it's hard to do a micro brand for that. It's, it just takes way longer to make it look nice. Uh, one word is great, but two words, you can come up with almost anything and have find a domain or come up with a micro brand for social media pages or whatever. Um, so I like to do the same number of letters as the cork keyword, plus or minus one. So if it's four letters, then I like to do either four letters or th three to five letters, right? If you do more than that, then it can look odd. Like in this case with ceiling fans, it's so fans would be so big if I was to make it equal in width to this, that it would look dumb. So in this case, another trick, like here's Chinese food also, I just left align them and, and it looks stylized. I think that looks, you know, pretty good. Excuse me. Anyways, uh, so let's, uh, tech is kind of bluish, right? Excuse me. So let's try, I guess we could try a green too, although that's kind of an obnoxious, Let's try this. Uh, well, let's let's try a blue color. So let's do, or let, let's let's align these first. I'm gonna grab picks. I guess this doesn't matter. Let me grab this width, and then let me grab. Make sure that's locked, or else it'll stretch and look dumb. So almost perfect. And I'm going to move these up closer together. Well, I guess it was fine. Line vertically align. And then I'm going to group these. And I'm going to go like this. Tall tech. Let me grab a square. Move that stroke. And let me push this to the, just started lagging all of a sudden. Push that to the bottom and let me change this background to this whitish color. Or let's, let's try a darker. Let's try a color like that. And then maybe we can do Something like that. Let's try this white and go center onto that square. So I selected that text box and then shift click that square and then center it up. Let me drop the size down a bit and <clears throat> excuse me, because some will take a square logo and then it'll it'll make it it'll cut off the edges and make it a a circular logo. So then I'm gonna I mean that that's a fine logo right there like it's really simple uh you can also do something where it's like you do control d and then move it to the side like this and then drop this down to the 
to one layer below and you can then do something like uh, like this right here. So it's just like offset. And if you did multiple layers, you could make it like, you know, multiple colors. So you could do multiple blue colors going down or you could do like rainbow colors or something. You could do it like that. The, the the way to the stylization methods i think the simplest ones the ones that are most powerful um tend to be pretty easy and to seem i think they have the some of the biggest effect excuse me if you look at the biggest logos out there they're they're all they tend to be really simple let me do control d and then let me um let me make this brightish blue color uh, yeah, and then let me drop this one level, go to stroke, turn that on, make it this brightish blue color by shift clicking, go to stroke style, put this down to oh, make sure this is set to pixels. 50 pixels. And that looks pretty good, actually. Then we just need to make a us. You can make a box. In this case, I'll make a circle because there the L's make it have this awkward amount of space at the top. So with a circle like this, we can kind of fill in. But then it looks sort of smooth. So let's try to drop that down. That looks all right. And then actually, it's kind of hard to select the, uh, the background here. Let's try, you know, let's just do the undoing. Undoing is easier. Just trying to get some of this filled in a little bit. We might just push this up to 60 or not even that 55. Yeah. And then we'll just go drop this down and then let's let, let's make another circle so that we can Try to create of an effect like this, I guess. Let's let's see how that looks. That's not bad. So it looks a, li a little bit odd. Let's maybe move it down. That's all right, <laughs> but let me save this. And that, that that blue is a little bit obnoxious. So let's let's move the core letters off and let's group this uh, entity and then re center. And then on this, let's try something a little bit darker. That's not bad. I don't know. So you, you get the idea though, like really simple way to kind of give a logo some substance, make something of a certain uh, level of quality, but not put a ton of time into it. So that's pretty much it guys. Appreciate you watching. Make sure to grab this template um, below for tall tech and uh, radical tinters. Now in order to export, I forgot to mention this, you just select, you want to select your, uh, this one looks better. Um, you would want to select your, uh, your entity and then under export PNG, you want to make sure it's set to selection. And then you can set the exact number of pixels that you want. If you want it to be exactly the dimensions you made here, the, the exact dimensions of objects is 96 DPI. And uh, then you can export as, name the file, put uh, um, label, or enter the location. 
And then once you do that, you have to click export and then it'll push the push that file into the into the folder you selected. It's a little bit weird that they have it set like that. You have to you have to name and select the location and then you have to export. But that's pretty much it. I appreciate you watching. Please like, comment and subscribe. If you have any questions, uh, send me a comment and I will catch you guys later. Thanks. Bye bye.